So one of the things that we wanted to do this morning was uh, to recognize where we're at. One of the things we want to do uh, this evening is to move into the future. So we're going to have a panel right now on where do we think the ecosystem is going? What do we need to do to support Cloud Foundry? Um, and after that, we're going to take you wildly into the future with the author of The Martian, introduced by the uh, Cloud Foundry's own Josh McKenty. Uh, no one better than an ex-NASA person and a co-founder of OpenStack to be the bridge between our community and, uh, uh, and space travel. So first, uh, if we do our jobs right, we talked this morning about achieving ubiquity. Many cloud foundries, everyone should have one. In fact, you can have several. If they are actually consistent, if we certify them, then you'll get portability across each one. Right? So many cloud foundries, lots of portability. What we want this to do is enable a large, safe place for ISVs to build brand new software that can be deployed anywhere, create a great market for them. So EMC Documentum is one of the largest and most complicated apps that you will see. It's a data center application that deals with lots of document storage and security. SAP HANA Cloud Platform, also one of the most complicated apps that you'll ever find, rendering all the capabilities of SAP to developers through Cloud Foundry and other services. So we'll learn from their experience. I want each of you to uh, think through what is this ecosystem going to look like when it's not just custom code, when it's not just all hard work of building every single piece yourself, but when we've got all of these capabilities of ubiquity, portability, and an ecosystem to make your job simpler. So with that, let me uh, ask you to please welcome two people. First, Jeroen von Rotterdam, the Chief Technology Officer of EMC Enterprise Content Division. Thank you very much. And Andreas Vesselman, who is the Senior Vice President of SAP Products and Innovation Technology. Thank you very much. So we were going to start with having uh, you understand a little bit more about what uh, Yaron and Andreas have built uh, for their organizations. So Yaron, I thought we'd start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the journey for, uh, sure. uh, for EMC, for building Documentum. Do you have anything on the, your clicker is not working. All right, OK. Yes. Here we go. All right, OK. Um, should work again. There we go. All right. So, so we started adopting Cloud Foundry uh, two and a half years ago. And we wanted to build a new multi-tenant platform. And what you see is that in our business, there's a lot of disruption going on. So we uh, sort of see a trend towards um, really smaller development life cycles on how to build apps. And these apps become more targeted as well. So you see lots and lots of applications happening in the enterprise that have um, smaller targeted use case. And the life cycle is sm smaller as well. And, and what you see is that the date and the content is sort of outliving the, um, the applications. And so we wanted to build a new platform where we could handle multiple applications for multiple tenants in a single environment, so multiple customers. So we built a public cloud SaaS platform on top of Cloud Foundry. But if you drill down into that, there are uh, sort of common shared services underneath it. So we built this microservices architecture for our process engine, our case engine, secure certs, and uh, metadata management, and content, et cetera. Now, if you want to see sort of the dis disruption I was shooting for, there were two folds, so a real disruption in TCO. So we really wanted to go to a model where the marginal cost to add a new tenant into this environment and to spin up a new application is really disruptive. And the second, we really wanted to go to a hyper-agile mode. And so to compare it, right, so um, going live from, um, you know, an 18-month project with a team to less than one second. Um, or changing the way we do releases. So on the traditional side, we typically release products every 12 months. Here, we, the concept of a release is sort of outdated. We want to continuously deploy new, new capabilities in the cloud, um, you know, at any, any point in time. Whether that's a patch release or new functionality, you just pick the latest green build and you push it out. And so release anytime is super important. 
And um, you know, we went from a single tenant environment to a multi-tenant environment to disrupt the cost significantly. One of the things that was most impressive about the, the, the business shift for you is to say, instead of having to ship our software into these complicated environments all the time, custom, hand-built, professional services-led, long implementation life cycles, how could you make the marginal cost of a single customer zero? Yeah, in so fact, you know, the, um, That's a transformational moment, yep. right? If you can tell the business that story, then they'll get behind you. Absolutely, and, and in that process, we got all third-party components as well, so that you know, only when applications are used, so when compute, you know, compute stores, networking uh, resources are used, our costs will go up. And because of that, you can go to really different business models where it's all based on consumption pricing. Now, when we uh, deployed Cloud Foundry, so like I said, we adopted it two and a half years ago. It was still with VMware before it went to, um, to Pivotal and then open source. Um, we went in production on August 1st last year. Ever since then, we push in production on a weekly basis. We've done a few releases in a few days, so every day a release. But on average, we're on a weekly um, push right now. We found some issues. So, um, um, is this the whole issues list, or were there more? No, there are more. There this more. is just the so, high yeah, so. I wanted to keep it friendly. So. <laughs> Um, but what's also interesting, there was an organization impact, right? So our organization was not used to that, that agility at all. So, um, you know, there are security constraints. There were people in the program management office as well. We need to have a release defined. We need to have sign off on this, right? So um, our product managers were not used to this frequency of releases. They said, well, we need to inform our customers and support and whatnot, right? So. It, it needs, um, you need to change your organization a lot as well if you go this route beyond the technology. All right. Awesome. So, uh, Quick intro. so Andreas, you're just coming off of uh, Sapphire. Uh, obviously, HANA Cloud Platform got a tremendous amount of attention there. Uh, uh, I thought you might be able to share with, uh, with all of us a, a sense of what is, it, what is it that customers are demanding out of HCP, out of HANA, that is that led you to Cloud Foundry, and how are you? you know, what, what are your experiences with uh, major customers like Siemens? Yeah, I think that's a good question because first, if you hear SAP, you might think of okay, this these stable, robust, business process-driven things, and why do they need now an open cloud platform? And just give you two examples why that's needed. The one thing is that you have a demand to extend your existing application, be it on-premises or be it cloud. And you do not want to wait until IT has a budget after one year and then run a two years project. So you just want to have it as you go. The other big challenge that our customers have is you have systems that you still run in the on-premises and you have cloud systems and you want to integrate them. So also there, you need an open cloud platform to do that. And this was why we initiated our path, which we call the, the HANA cloud platform. This is certainly one thing. But there is a second thing that is a key driving force that comes up now very prominently that's driven through the whole digitization that happens in the industry and that is really disrupting the industry. It's in the machine industry, it's the sensors, you heard even about the insurance industry, you hear it in the automotive industry. And I think that really puts new challenges regarding big data, but also regarding openness and the need for an open cloud platform and ecosystem there. And these are big trends where customers are asking us, what is our answer? And coming back to the Sapphire, what we just announced, for example, last week at the Sapphire at Orlando, which is our big sales event, is a partnership together with Siemens as a big industry player that are betting and building on our open cloud platform, which includes then the Cloud Foundry assets as we go, so to really build out their industry cloud for the future. And this is certainly a key scenario what customers are expecting for us. So they're going to be building further apps that they ship on top of HCP that's operating yes, on behalf so of the, Siemens. The, the idea is basically they take the core platform that we offer, they build out their application, which they call the industry service bus. That's basically their connection point to the different machines that they have, to the turbines, to the windmills. And then all of their customers are leveraging that and just want to have it. And they want to have web-based access. They want to run that within our SAP data centers, but also within their data centers. So the topic of private cloud deployment, that flexibility that we can run on OpenStack, that they can add their own services. So Rabbis, Rabbit, Postgres, that's of key importance. 
and therefore we decided to join the foundation and we are very happy and I'm quite happy to see all the momentum here and all the people because that's kind of the tradition of SAP that alone we never ever win, it's always about partnering and teaming up in the ecosystem. And to your point, one of the, one of the amazing things about Cloud Foundry is that since everyone can have one and they're consistent and portable, we actually have the opportunity to really change the software supply chain. You're actually talking about an ecosystem of ecosystems where you can start to bring in the providers who build on top of SAP or on top of Documentum, which are also being offered as the clouds that large industry players as software is eating the world, right? And each of the major global 2000 companies becomes a software company. There are much bigger packages that can flow all the way through the system. They can also be a lot smaller. So I guess to, to, to close, I would ask each of you for uh, what's, your, what's your single best uh, sort of piece of advice for uh, someone who's here or somebody who's watching on the live stream who's currently at a big ISV thinking, or even a, a, a net new ISV, how would you guide them to think about getting onto Cloud Foundry as a business platform? Well, you know, the, it, it's a business decision, right? So it's so extremely painful to deploy software in a very large scale global enterprise setting, right? As an ISV, you know, if you're offering it as a service. And just focus on the business, and you'll see lots and lots of hurdles, right? So the, the challenges we had with, you know, our global security office, uh, for instance, our program management, convincing that developers are actually know what they do when they push stuff in production. Um, but in the end, it's a business drive. It's so easy. You're, you're, you're reducing costs significantly, and the agility you get with it is just unbelievable. Any silver bullets for getting through the security review? Yeah, so, you know, you just live with it, so, yeah. <laughs> so, if you're struggling with your security officer, give him, uh, have him give uh, Jeroen uh, van Rotterdam a ca uh, call, and he'll walk them through the whole process. Uh, Andreas, what, uh, what guidance would you offer uh, ISVs who are thinking about building on Cloud Foundry in terms of their, their opportunity, and then maybe a little bit about uh, what to watch out for, if you have any, uh, any guidance? I mean, f for me, the key argument also along the lines with the business decision is that if you do not have such an open cloud platform, you are simply not able to stay competitive in the market. I mean, this is why also yes. the big industries are coming also to us and asking, how do you approach that? Because on the one hand side, they have the industry-specific knowledge. On the other hand side, they cannot build out the challenges of that big data digitization in the future without having the platform. Yeah. So, and that's important to understand, it's a combination of both. Without having a key open platform available, you are not competitive in your business environment. I think that's the main driver why a lot of corporates, ISVs, looking into that and are piggybacking on that story here. Yeah, so we invite you to, to explore Cloud Foundry as a way to defragment your own ecosystem, right? Fragmented ecosystems don't grow so well. But if we can all share each other's uh, insight, if we can have common programming models, we can make this a much more efficient place to play. So with that, thank you so much for your leadership and for your time. Uh, Jeroen, all right. much obliged. Thanks a lot. Yeah, good seeing you. Andreas, thank you so much. Thank you so much.